So I finished internship, mm -hmm. thank God. And then, <laughs> thank God, um, yes. I was posted to one of the most unlikely places. So just before we finished the internship, we'd go for some leadership. Okay, I think it was leadership. It was the Uganda Management Institute. They would take you for five days to uh -huh. learn certain things. Mm -hmm. So when we're there, then now um, people would come to talk about potential job opportunities mm -hmm. because um, it was very difficult to be posted in the National Referral Hospital. It was already full. Mm. And then there were some few hospitals around Kampala. Everybody wanted to stay in Kampala. Mm. So if you didn't get posted to Malago, mm. there were some big private uh, mission hospitals. You could be posted there. Mm. Then the other option was now being thrown into, <laughs> thrown mm. into a district hospital mm. in the middle of nowhere. Mm. And of course, none of us wanted to be posted mm. up country. <laughs> Yeah, that was uh, that was normal. Mm. None of us wanted to be posted up country. Mm. So when we were in that meeting, a group came, and um, this was a hospital mm -hmm. three kilometers from Museveni's village home, mm -hmm. the president's village home. Mm. Oh, he is president at the time. He was president at okay. the time. Mm. Yes, mm. he was president at the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he has um, been for a while. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the president had. Um, I think I, I think it was done as soon as he took power. Mm. I don't really know when the thing was set up. Mm. So he's the place where he comes from is very sparsely populated. Mm -hmm. It's a nom they are nomads. They have a lot of people have a lot of cattle, mm -hmm. like huge expanses of land. You can if you are like in the middle of this place, you can look around you and you can see your neighbor. Oh man, this is how big people's mm. land were. Mm. And so if you have such a sparsely populated population, then distances to healthcare mm. were very long. It, obviously, yes. Mm. I've seen it, somebody who traveled for 48 hours to Whoa. get to the hospital. You know, first Whoa. of all, road transport. So you walk and walk and walk and walk, and then somewhere you have to do, I don't know, they have to carry you on the back. And mm. so it was really difficult. Mm. So when he came, I think he saw there was a huge need. So he set up this. It was mm. a community Center. hospital. Mm. Um, so he got, I think, some donations, I don't remember, from Hungary or something. Mm. And they set up this place in the middle, literally, in the middle of nowhere. Mm. And so these people come and they tell us we're looking for doctors for this hospital. Mm. And um, like, okay, um, why are you looking for doctors? Mm -hmm. So this hospital has been had been set up. The first doctors, I think, were from Hungary, mm. Austria. They're from Austria. Mm -hmm. And so these Austrian doctors had come. It mm. was like a project. And then mm -hmm. I think afterwards they left. Mm. Then they got some other doctors. They had never gotten Ugandan doctors mm. to work in that hospital. Mm -hmm. Now the last doctors had just left mm. in very acrimonious circumstances. Mm -hmm. So they were looking for now mm. doctors to man this hospital. Mm -hmm. So I think about it. I'm like, okay, why not? Mm. So two of us sign up mm -hmm. and they... They brought a truck, mm -hmm. a Tata truck, mm -hmm. loaded our stuff from mm -hmm. Kampala. Mm -hmm. We sat in the front cabin and they drove us to this place in the middle of nowhere. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, so we get there and it was one block. I think it had a small road, about 40 beds, mm. um, small theater. They, small they'd lab. actually put up an establishment yeah, or was, was it a container? No, 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 it was a hospital. It was okay. like a, a permanent okay. block, but like just Great. one block. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. So we get there mm. and the first thing we find is that um, it was not on the main grid electricity, so it had solar power. Mm. And at around 11 p.m., the, like the lights would just go off. Okay. The system was that old. It was about six years old mm. and the power would just go off like mm. at 11 p.m. Mm. And then you'd light hurricane lamps mm. and put them in the woods. Mm. So if you wanted to do, um, we found they had a generator. Mm. So if you wanted to do like a, an emergency surgery at night, you can't. You'd, no, no, you'd switch on the generator. You'd so you'd have to go find somebody. Shoo, 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 shoo. Get fuel yeah. in the generator, Whoa. switch it on, mm. and then sterilize mm. things, mm. and then do surgery. Mm. So it, if you if it, if there was like an emergency, mm. you needed about an hour and a half mm. to do the emergency surgery. Mm. Because that's how long it took you to switch on the generator and sterilize. We mm. had some autoclave, which was using steam, mm. but which would only work with the generator. Mm. So you put the generator. Mm. to clear things mm. and then set up and then do this emergency mm. emergency surgery yeah. two hours later yeah so that was the thing mm. um water was rainwater mm. and there was mm. a borehole mm. which was not connected to anything so the patients used borehole and then the hospital used mm. rainwater mm. yeah <laughs> wow no phone um 
network connection. There was no, that time there was no. Mm. I think mobile phones came mm. Mm. around that time. Mm. That's, what, that's how old I am. Mm. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there was a post office. Mm. <clears throat> so if you wanted, if people wanted to contact you, mm. they would call the post office. Mm. Then the postmaster would send somebody on a bicycle mm. with a note that says you have a phone call. Mm. And so you should come there by, mm. let's say 12. Mm. So you go there and sit. While you're sitting, there are people waiting also have been told to come and the person has not called back. Mm. And there are people waiting to call, mm. um, to flash somebody mm. so the person can call them back because it was very expensive. <laughs> so you sit and wait, wait, and if you're lucky, the other person calls back. Mm. And you're like in a small open space and everybody's listening to this conversation oh. on your on the phone. That's how, yeah, isolated this place was. Oh, wow. And so we go, we go there, two of us, straight out of medical school. Mm. This guy was my classmate. Mm. And uh, he becomes the medical superintendent. I become the deputy mm. uh, medical superintendent. Mm. I don't know why. Mm. Like, how could that be? <laughs> um, I was the woman, so I had to be the deputy. He was the man. I had to be the medical <laughs> was that the reason, though? It must have been. Like, what, how else? Like, what other? Because you are both. Uh, we are from the same class, yeah. literally. Mm -hmm. So there was no other reason. Mm. It was like no more. Like, mm. there's medical soup and deputy then. Mm. Medical soup is man, deputy mm. is woman. Okay. So we go there, mm. two of us, mm. and um, try to run a hospital. Mm. Wow. <laughs> I think the most stressful time of my life, three oh, years, yeah? like oh, yeah? the most stressful time mm. of my life. Mm. Because you get there, as I've said, hospital, no running water, no power, mm. no electricity. Mm. All these things like you make up as you go. Mm. Money, huge mm. problem. Mm. Because it was a paying hospital, mm. people had to pay. Mm. And, and then yeah like we start budgeting mm. like <laughs> make money and buy drugs mm. buy fuel for the generator slash the compound mm. buy gloves and mm. make sure the hospital is clean mm. pay salaries of the nurses mm. and still keep money to buy more drugs so mm. that the hospital can keep running mm. wow we learned management finance hr admin everything that you possibly everything can. like crash mm. course mm. crash course like mm. um mm. crisis after crisis mm. and we got there mm. And we pulled up the hospital because by mm. the time we came, we went there, the hospital was almost dead. Mm. Like people had given up because, mm. as I said, the predecessors mm. had left in acrimonious circumstances. Mm. So there was a lot of lack of trust. Mm. And then we get there and, yeah, people start hearing, oh, there are new doctors, oh, there are mm. new doctors, there are new doctors, mm. there are new doctors. So people start coming. And the more patients that came, then that's how it was possible to, mm. to keep running because you could make money yeah. and then, you know, buy drugs and yeah. pay stuff. Yeah. But it was a huge steep learning, learning curve. curve. <laughs> yeah, for us. Yeah. And um, we go there and we work. As I've said, stress two doctors. Mm. So. <clears throat> and a couple of nurses, though. You yeah, had, yeah. There you had, had, we, had, we had nurses. Yeah. We had people in the lab. Mm. We had somebody in the pharmacy. Mm. We had more people. Mm. But really, the stress was that um, if my colleague was away, mm. then I was on call, mm. like 24 7. Mm. So you mm. wake up in the morning, mm. eight o'clock, you are there, mm. you, you do the outpatient, mm. you finish outpatient, you don't even finish, you you see like the first batch, you go and do ward rounds, Come see because we had uh, we had admissions, we had 40 beds, Oof. you do admissions, and then if you're there, there's an emergency, mm. those people liked fighting, so there were lots of trauma, <laughs> people with cuts on their heads and yeah. broken legs and all. Yeah. So you do that, and then of course, the occasional emergency C-section, mm. you do that, and then like at, um, like my lunch, I, I used to skip lunch a lot. Mm. Like lunch was not part of what you was not about. important yeah. because there was so much to do. Mm. And then at around five o'clock, now you're going home. When you're about to go home, then you see like a double indicator. Oh, no. <laughs> they are bringing somebody else. Okay, forget yeah. going oh, home. My Let's deal with this emergency. Deal with that emergency. Then you go back home at eight o'clock. Tired. You're there just about half dinner, then you see the lights coming uh, up the uh, hill uh, to your house. Uh, 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 oh, doctor, there's another emergency. Or oh, the other patient has oh. taken a turn for the worse. Oh my God. Oh, yeah. That's so, like, a... so the very... president, you say the president was having had set this place up with yes. some resources. Does he ever, did he ever keep in touch or his team keep in um, touch with the hospital? Yes, the team know? did. They're the ones who like recruited us. Mm -hmm. So there was like a management board. Mm. And so they, they kept in touch. Mm. And, um, but, oh my God, <laughs> it was very stressful. Mm. I, I, I think my faith and my passion to be a doctor was killed, like literally died 
because of the period. during that period. Yeah. But part of it were those other systemic issues. Yeah. I think they were they were like they so, kept on uh, um, cre- creeping up. Yeah. So um, HIV at that time was really at its peak. Yeah. There were no ARVs. Mm. So if you got an HIV positive person. Mm. You, you treated whatever it is that brought them. Mm. Many times it was TB, yeah. uh, or pneumonia. There are the opportunities. Oh, the opportunistic infection. infections. Mm. You, de- you dealt with those, mm. and then one year down the line, mm. they got the big one. Mm. Most people used to die from cryptococcal meningitis. Mm. So you you treat these people. Many many of them came with TB. Many mm. many people came with TB, mm. and TB was one of the most rewarding mm. <laughs> diseases you could treat because mm. somebody would come when they can't talk, they can't mm. walk, they can't eat. Mm. They are really sick, mm. and then you put them on treatment five days. Mm. You the, go and the person is sitting up in bed, and their so whole face better. has changed. Mm. It was so rewarding mm. treating TB cases. Mm. So then people recover mm. after you treat. I think would keep them for I don't remember a month or so, and then would discharge them. Mm. Then they would stay on treatment. Mm. It was so rewarding. You mm. see the person after six months, you can't mm. believe it's the same person. Mm. And then three months later, they come. Oh, you know, doctor got this thing. Happy all stuff. Ah, oh, okay, you treat it. Then, like one year, this person comes. I have severe headache, and then you would know this person is going to die, because it was so difficult to treat cryptococcal meningitis. So these are people who you had made some kind of connection. Mm. You saved their lives. They came mm. with TB. They are so thankful. They mm. come to you. They come for checkup. When they come and say, "Doctor, I have headache," you're like, "Oh boy!" Like your heart would sink, because you you knew that as night follows day, this one, is, this is it. So we lost. You know, one person dies, another one dies, another one dies, and it sort of keeps on eating at you. Like mm. I am, I'm prolonging people's lives yeah. for them to die inevitably. Mm. It was almost like mm. death was inevitable. Mm. That was one part of it. HIV was one part of it. Mm. Then, of course, the system itself. Uganda has very many private practitioners, mm-hmm. and I think the regulation is terrible. Mm. So, and it's private, <laughs> local. Yeah, or small. Let, let, mm. No, no, no. Mm. Uh, private. So many. Everybody can be a practitioner mm. almost. Mm. So you'd get these people mm. who've been mismanaged mm. in the system. Mm. As I've said, most of the cases we got for HIV were TB. Mm. But you find someone has been treated like for malaria mm. for six months. Mm. They go here. They treat the malaria, malaria. They've given them all the antimalarials in the world. Mm. And this person walks in, you look at them and you can see like TB written on their face because it was so typical. And you ask yourself, what kind of system is it mm. that can't diagnose TB? Hmm. Like we are in HIV, everybody knows we are in an HIV yeah. epidemic. Mm. Like TB is one of the defining illnesses. Yeah. But how, how, how can the system be so broken that somebody can be sick for mm. six, seven, eight months and none of, nobody has ever thought about They're just doing... checking them for TB? Mm. So you would get those, mm. lots of them, mm. have piles mm. of papers from mm. all sorts mm. of private mm. clinics and hospitals. Mm. And then you you know, treat them and as I said, they go. Mm. So um, it was very rewarding from that perspective. Mm. Of, uh, we said we, we had a very good reputation, mm. far and wide, people mm. would come. Mm. Um, we started doing HIV counseling, mm. we did um, uh, you know, all sorts of things, immunization, all that. And then now the other thing was, um, you know those those issues of uh, in obstetric emergencies. Mm. As I've said, we once did surgery on a woman who had something called a ruptured ectopic pregnancy, and they had travelled for forty eight hours Whoa. to get hospital. Mm. <laughs> the, the woman was paper thin, like paper white, white white, because she had bled like in the whole abdominal cavity and she was alive <laughs> that was like the most surprising thing and she had been bleeding she had been i think she bled until like the, the there was like the clotting so the bleeding mm. stopped because mm. of the clotting mm. when i think about that i was like wow like this is a system where you can get a ruptured ectopic pregnancy and you spend 48 hours trying to get care and you still survive it um Plot twist, that woman didn't pay and she ran away from hospital <laughs> without paying her medical bills. <laughs> that happened a lot. Um, and that was so depressing um, because like the, the amount of resources you put into that yeah. uh, patient, as mm, I've said, we mm. were struggling to keep afloat. Mm. And then you wake up in the morning and say, this woman just disappeared. You find mm. the, the bed is empty and they didn't mm. pay one single bill. 
it was one of those <laughs> depressing things in the system. Mm. And so, um, mm. so you have to, you struggle with, okay, what do I do? Mm. Do I not treat people yeah, the unless, unless is... they put money? Yeah. Should we have sent this woman on her way no. to another hospital? Mm. And um, those people that said they are, they are cattle keepers, so they don't mm. have cash mm. all the time. Mm. They only get cash after selling a cow. Mm. So we had to figure out that balance of, mm. You want to provide care, but you also need money mm. to keep the hospital running. What? And um, dealing with those were there, payments. Of, were, <clears throat> were there funders or grants that would, would support this kind of... I mean, where you are situated already is a uh, low resource uh, yeah. environment. It, there is already good case that can be made for support. <laughs> so the only support which existed was um, the government was paying our salaries. As the and then as doctors who have been posted there. Right. But then the hospital was, was giving us an additional allowance. But our salaries were being paid by the government. Okay. So that's the government support that yeah. we gave to this. Mm. And then we'd get things like family planning, mm. commodities, mm. like vaccines, mm -hmm. like TB drugs. Mm. So a lot of things would get them from mm. the government mm. for free. But overheads and yeah. other things. But then like all the nurses, yeah. all the clinical officers, yeah. all those were the being paid. The running costs needed to exactly. come from. We're being paid from. The, the the fees yeah. from from, yeah. from from patients Ish. and yeah but it was like baptism by fire you learn a lot of things mm. dealing with people supervision mm. mentorship mm. discipline mm. 